Thank you, Alexis, and uh, thank you always for your efforts and uh, your management of the webinar series. Much appreciated, and thank you, Antero Alvarado, for uh, joining us this morning to be our featured presenter. Uh, Antero is managing partner at Gas Energy Latin America, and uh, I think uh, we're, we're very lucky to have Antero speaking this morning on this topic. Um, as most of us online, I assume just about everyone knows that Venezuela has uh, the, the world's uh, eighth largest natural gas reserves, but for many, many years those reserves have um, not been exploited uh, to, to their utmost, and indeed they've primarily been used by the oil and gas industry uh, for uh, reinjection largely, but other uh, aspects of the, uh, the oil industry. So there's been a, a long winding discussion as to how Venezuela's immense natural gas reserves can be best exploited, brought to market, used uh, domestically, and maybe even exported. And, and, I'll, and I'll just wrap up by saying that the timeliness of this was enhanced by the Cardone Quattro, the Cardone 4 project, and the parallel field that Repsol and Eni are now bringing into production. So we, uh, we're, we're talking and, and meeting this morning at a very, very opportune moment where there has been some interesting developments. And there's one last piece I'll mention on that and what is the role of PETAVESA in that uh, new project coming online and production of gas ramping up there. Uh, it's currently a project that, Ed, that Repsol and Eni are developing. So we look forward to Antero Alvarado's thoughts on all of these topics. And so I'm going to immediately pass it over to him. And, and thanks again, Antero, for joining us and presenting this morning. Over to you. Thank you, Jeremy and Alexis, for the opportunity uh, to present I mean, a couple of slides about Venezuela natural gas industry. Um, first of all, I know I have 20 minutes, so I'm going to be um, quickly in each slide, and then I can answer all questions. Well, quickly, uh, Gas Energy is a consulting firm. We are focused in natural gas. We are in, in the entire Latin America. We have main offices in Lima and Santa Cruz in Bolivia, and from there we cover the entire region. Next. Uh, then, I mean, we are um, uh, a very large team, uh, people, um, our team means engineers, economists, uh, lawyers, I mean, that give us a, a very many tools for analysis, okay? And we are also in the region. That's uh, one of our uh, main uh, skills, I mean, and strength because we are not doing consulting from, from, from Geneva or London, okay? Um, and the fact that we are here, we have daily contact with our clients and that gives us uh, many in, inside information. Next. Um, well, I will skip all these slides because, I mean, we, are, we lost a couple of minutes and I would like to profit. I mean, this is things we do. We have specific consultant studies, multi-client, short-term retainer studies. I mean, we provide information to clients. I mean, we are tailor-made, okay? Uh, a couple of, of our companies, uh, clients, we have um, majors, we have uh, gas distributors, we have power companies, uh, banks, okay? Um, I mean, institutions such as, I mean, OLADE or the Ministry of Energy in Peru, for example, okay? Next. Okay, now we're starting. Uh, I decided to split the presentation in the present and the future because the title of this presentation is the future of the natural gas industry. So before to talk with the future, I would like to present, I mean, the present, which is very, very, I'm going to be very quickly here. Next. Okay, so we're going to see, I mean, the players, institution, and gas framework. Okay, this is the first part. First of all, we have to say that um, there is a, a, a branch of PDVSA, which is called PDVSA Gas, which is the gas branch of the company, okay, which is, was created I mean, uh, 15 years ago, and this is recently, and that also um, uh, means that Prior that, the use of natural gas in the country was very reduced, okay? And of course, we, we are an oil, com oil country, 
and natural gas has been all, always seen as a sub product of the of the industry okay but then in the 1999 we the, the government promote promulgate an, a gas law so we are probably the single country that have uh, oil law and a gas law okay this is to separate uh, I mean that give us different taxation and regulation for for the gas industry, and the fact that mm, that law was promulgated, we saw uh, an, an, a push in the in the industry, a new dynamic, and, and that was at the beginning of the of, of the mandate of Hugo Chavez. Okay, so we have to to put in to put that things in. I mean that was. 16 years ago, okay? But mm, besides, we have uh, a gas law, we, we have a, a regulatory body which is called ENAGAS. Today, uh, PDVSA gas is still having the monopoly of the, the entire industry, okay? Uh, we have the instrument, we have the law, but at the end, uh, the, the industry went in the wrong direction, okay? Besides, we have all these instruments approved, okay? Next. Okay, in this, in this slide we can see the organizational chart of PDVSA. In red, we see at your left all branches we have to produce oil, okay? But only in the, in, you see in the red, in, in yellow, and your right, we just see a single branch which is called PDVSA gas, which is the branch of PDVSA uh, in charge of produce non associated gas. The rest, uh, which is the red is in charge to produce oil and associated gas related which is associated to oil okay so that means that we have an entire um, state company designed to produce oil not natural gas okay that's the message I would like you to give you with this slide okay next so now we're going to to, to review mm, gas reserve, okay? Uh, this, uh, this slide I, I wanted to, to show you because uh, what we see in the red circle is, uh, is the Guyana shield. Um, that means that this is igneous rock um, where there's no oil or any hydrocarbon in this area. So that's why in the following slides you won't see this part of the country okay it's, this is it's basically to to show you where the the, the the reserve are and I'm just excluding this area okay next so here we see I mean only the north part of the country where the reserve uh, lies what we see in red is associated uh, <coughs> gas reserve associated to oil, okay? That means that to develop this reserve, we have to develop oil industry, okay? But what we see in yellow is uh, what we call <clears throat> non-associated gas, which is uh, we call gas libre, okay? And that's the area where the government focused uh, 16 years ago to, to, develop, to develop this reserve, okay? So that after the promulgation of the gas law, okay? What we see, we have uh, Huarico, which is what we call the Llanos, and Anac Oficina, which is, has been, I mean, for the last 50 years, the, the area where the gas comes from, okay, basically. And then we have three areas in the offshore, what we call Rafael Urdaneta, Mariscal Sucre, and Plataforma Altana, um, where we're going to stress uh, about this project in, in the following slides. Uh, we have almost 200 TCF of natural gas reserve, uh, but basically 80% are associated uh, are associated to, to to oil, okay, which is imply a huge challenge for for, for PDVSA and for the country, okay. Next. In this slide, I mean, we can see that after the promulgation of the law, we saw a jump in the natural gas reserve, okay? 
um, 300 percent basically okay um, this is mainly due to carbon 4 reserve okay which is uh, are the, the the project is coming online very well he, he started last Saturday came online last Saturday and um, we will explain in the following uh, slides a little bit more okay next Okay, we're going to talk about natural gas, uh, Alan. Okay, this slides, uh, what we show you, these official figures uh, that we produce around 7.5, around 7.5 GCF, okay? This is a huge uh, amount of gas. The problem is that the domestic market only receives 2.2 GCF mainly, okay? That means that a huge part of the production, mainly 70% of the production, remain in the, for, in the oil industry, okay? Mm, that means that uh, uh, we have the country split in two main markets, I mean, the domestic market and the oil industry market. As Jeremy mentioned, this particularity mm, makes the country national gas uh, market very particular, okay? You have to, to send gas to, to the oil production as well to the domestic market, but who's the priority, okay, for the government? Send gas to the, to the reservoir to increase production or to keep production, uh, to keep the plateau of production, or send gas to the power plants uh, where there are important blackouts in the last years. So this is the decision what to do with the gas, okay? That's um, the, the, a big dilemma of the government, okay? Next. Okay, in this slide, we show you the different kind of challenge, okay? Producing gas in Venezuela mm, is not the same in all areas, okay? But we see in Western Venezuela, which we saw in red, is a, a production at, in a declining basin, and there are wells producing in the last 90 years, probably someone in the last 100 years, okay? Uh, some of those uh, reservoirs um, are high H2S content. I mean, this is very poison and very dangerous operation, okay? Uh, and the mainly gas produ produced here is associated to, to oil, okay? Then we see in Guarico, which is in, in the yellow, uh, area, we have private producing gas in this area, mainly uh, French Total, um, Impex, uh, Japanese-based company. Okay, they are producing gas, and this gas is very uh, has around 20% of CO2, which make very very expensive production. Okay, then um, we see the the area where PDVSA is the main producer. We have ANACO, which is a non-associated gas, okay? This is the, the typical area that has been producing gas for, for many years. And then we have North Monagas, which is uh, associated gas, but mm, the gas is, which is produced in this area is reinjected, okay? Uh, we will see in the following uh, slides the amount the gas in this area require, okay? Next. Uh, then we see here in this chart, I mean, the area where the gas is produced, okay? We see that basically the entire uh, production of gas comes from the east of Venezuela, okay? And in yellow, we see the, the declining basin of Maracaibo, which um, has been producing gas from, from many years associated to oil. And now this, uh, this, this production is declining, so that's why of the reason why PDVSA decided to import gas from Colombia, okay, is to, to compensate the, the declining uh, production of gas in this area, okay? Uh, next. Okay, so in this slide, uh, we see mm, the gas production by operator, okay? Uh, we imported gas until last, uh, last month, okay? Uh, that that gas represented around one percent of the of the entire market. Okay, uh, then we had uh, PDVSA EMP, what we call PDVSA Occidente, which currently produces eighty percent of the total. The problem is that mm, all gas produced in this area right now uh, remain in the oil industry. Okay, 
um, 10 years ago, uh, there were more volume of gas available and that the excedent were delivered to the market. Okay, and right now this area is uh, has a deficit because of this decline. Okay, then we have private, which represents six six percent. Okay, they are located in Los Llanos. Okay, then we have PDVSA gas, which right now uh, produces twelve percent, and this is a declining area also. Okay, and then uh, we have the PDVSA Oriente, which I mean, it's the larger producer by far, 73%, okay? Um, okay, that's the message of this slide. So that was until mid, I mean, on, that was the picture a month ago. Uh, why I mentioned that this slide was uh, until mid-2015, uh, because uh, right now we, we are seeing two different things. We, we, have, we see that there's no more gas from Colombia, um, probably the share of private will increase due to the startup of carbon four. Okay, but I mean it's very we are in an early stage to to see um, how that will change this figure. Okay, all, all this uh, this percentage. Okay, next. Okay, natural gas consumption. We see that uh, in the domestic market, okay, the main consumer is power generation. Okay, then we see oil, which is uh, which is not injection. Okay, it's basically uh, PDVSA needs for power generation for their own power plant, uh, for as a fuel for steam generation, water plants, um, etc. Okay. And then we see petrochemical. Um, we have three main uh, power uh, petchem complex in Venezuela, and they are lacking of gas. They are they're having problems because of the lack of gas, okay, as well as the power, okay. And then we see manufacturing, residential, etc. Et but what we see here is that power generation is the main, the main consumer. Um, however, the deficit of gas in the power sector. Uh, goes around 800 million cubic feet. It's huge, okay. And this gap has been bridging using liquids, okay, um, mainly diesel. So we we have a power sector uh, which consume, I mean, almost 150 kBT, okay, mm, which is I think by far the largest of the region. This diesel is produced in Venezuela. Um, and we have to, when there are troubles with refineries, um, sometimes the diesel must be imported for the power. But until, until now, uh, the entire diesel we consume in the power generation is, uh, is producing in, in, in local refineries. Okay? Next. Okay, uh, just to, to show you an idea of uh, the main gas consumer. Okay, we talk about supply now. We're going to we're talking about demand. We see that uh, in in red uh, near Maturin, uh, oil industry. I mean, 70% of the of the gas production is consumed by the oil industry only in this area. Okay, that makes uh, a disbalance, an incredible disbalance. Um, making only a single spot the country the main gas consumer. Okay, then we see in yellow the following area in, in consumption. We see Maracaibo, which represents 10 percent, and we see Maracaibo has a, a huge residential uh, demand. We're talking that the the, the 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 city of Maracaibo, which has a, around four million habitants consumes more natural gas than the entire Buenos Aires, which has more than 50 million habitants, okay? That's a long story. Mm, I don't want to, to, to stress on that, but I mean, we have a serious problem of, uh, of energy efficiency, okay? Not only in, in, in the industry, but in the residential, okay? We consume huge volume of gas, and probably because uh, the lack of the, the, the old infrastructure, um, there are huge leaks um, uh, and loss, okay? <clears throat> then we see Puerto La Cruz, uh, which is an industrial area where basically is processed the entire oil production coming from Faja. 
So we have upgraded refineries, we have petrochemical, uh, we have uh, power, cement, we have huge industry uh, in this area. And then we have uh, Puerto Ordaz, which historically was the industrial area of iron, heavy, heavy industry, steel, etc. Then we have 3% in, the, in, in, the, in what we see in, red, in, in, in green, okay, in the, other, the opposite side of the country, which is called Paraguaná, where is the largest uh, refinery in, 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 probably in the world, which is called uh, Complejo Refinador Paraguaná, which is include uh, Amway Refinery and Cardon Refinery. Okay? So this is the area where the treatment plant are, so it's located. Uh, where we, the gas from carbon four will be, will be treated, okay? And then we have, I mean, Barquisimeto, Morón, and Caracas, which is uh, consume very, very few volume of gas in, in comparison with the other areas, okay? So what we see is that the Western Venezuela is highly dependent on natural gas, okay? And it's where the gas is uh, is lacking, okay? It's where where the, the main deficit is, okay? Next. Okay, we're going to talk about price. I mean, this is a huge challenge for, for, for the national industry. Okay, what we see here is that we have many different kind of price, okay? We have um, wellhead prices, which is what we see in Mariscal Sucre, what we see in the yellow, in the yellow area. Uh, we're thinking that this, the, the price for this project will be around six. We don't know exactly. Uh, this figure, but mm, we assume that will be very expensive gas because PDVSA has been pu putting money in this project along years, many years, 20 years we're talking. So in some way, uh, this gas is very expensive, of course, mainly because of that, okay? Then we see carbon 4 where the price will be $4 million VTU, okay? Then we see PDVSA gas price which is basically the gas that PDVSA EMP sells to, to their branch, PDVSA gas, and it's almost nothing. Um, that's because uh, price is set in local currency, and the last time this price was revised was in 2006. And because we have the largest and the, the highest inflation in the world, so this price is almost nothing, okay? Uh, so that's one, one of the reasons why the, the, the area uh, has been, I mean, nobody wants to, to go and, and produce uh, gas, okay? Then we see price for private, okay? Um, we have different price for private. One of them received $2 for million BTU, and the other one $3.2. And one of the producer uh, finally arrange um, to have an indexation of, of the price using American inflation, okay? The problem of all those prices is that mainly gas produced in Venezuela is paid in Bolivares. Then the company have to deal how to change these Bolivares in, into dollars, okay? Only Cardon 4 will have a different treatment, okay? Next. Okay, now we're going to talk about, I mean, the future. So that was the present, so now we're going to talk about the future. Next. Okay, in this slide I would like, I, I wanted to show you uh, the window of opportunities because that's what we're talking about, about the future, okay? Um, quickly, we see that we have three main markets for export because we are sure that exporting gas will be a uh, very fast way to to improve our industry, okay? Um, as I mentioned, private produced gas for the domestic markets are paying local currency, which is uh, makes no incentive to, to increase production, okay? Or to attract new investment, okay? So what we see in the opportunity is that we have neighbors, okay, that they need gas, okay? They need the gas we have and we have a lot, okay? First of all, we have Colombia, and we have a gas line which was built in 2007 by, um, by PDVSA, 
which connect uh, Maracaibo with Ballena uh, area in Colombia, um, where we received imported gas from Colombia until last month, okay? And the gas line is ready, okay? And Venezuela has to export gas in the first of uh, January of 2016, okay? Um, we have to start exporting gas to Colombia, okay? And we will reach 150 million cubic feet in the fourth year of the of the contract, okay? And Colombia, of course, is a, a, an important market which is uh, is coming into a deficit in the next three years, okay? So Colombia is very interesting of Venezuelan gas. First of all, because the infrastructure is is done and it's cheaper, okay? We're talking that the price is linked to a formula and the price will reach. Um, probably for the next year will be below three dollars. Okay. Then we have the Antillean market. So we're talking that, uh, that Aruba, Curacao, and Bonaire will become um, a market for, for for the gas of carbon four in the case uh, if that happens. Okay. And in the in the east of Venezuela, we have two main projects. First, of, the first one is Mariscal Sucre, and the other one is Plataforma Altana. Both projects are borderline with Trinidad. Okay, as you may as you may know, Trinidad is also running out of gas, and Trinidad has um, an important infrastructure of LNG, and the future of Trinidad LNG, I mean, passed through an agreement with Venezuela. Okay, um, we will stress on those projects in the following slide. Next. Okay, the first project I would like to show you is Mariscal Sucre, which is 100% PDVSA, and PDVSA is looking for private, for investors, basically Russian and Chinese. I mean, they are the only ones who can afford this kind of project, uh, who, who are able to be part of PDVSA in a project like that. Okay, next. Okay. Um, Mariscal Sucre is an old project. I mean, that project started at the end of the 90s, but um, PDVSA tried uh, to launch that project many times. Um, in, during 2003, PDVSA tried to launch that project through an LNG project, but it failed. Okay, um, we just count the, the how many fails had PDVSA in that project, and we count six. Okay, uh, so. PDVSA decided to go alone in that project because nobody wants to, to go with PDVSA in that project. Basically, because 100% of the gas coming from Mariscal Sucre should be destined, destined to the domestic market. Okay, So we have four main areas, Rio Caribe, Mejillones, Patao, and Dragon. PDVSA uh, is working in Dragon area, which is the border, uh, border field with uh, Trinidad. Okay? And they expect to produce in the next year the first molecule. Okay, we're talking about 70 million cubic feet, and the phase two will be a little bit more. Okay, mm, this uh, line which you see, a pointed uh, the blue line you see pointed, is the subsea infrastructure which is already done by PDVSA, and it spent huge um, amount of money uh, building that. And the delivery point will be Guiria. Uh, this is an uh, onshore area in, in Venezuela, which is the stream east of the country. And as well, we is also connected with a gas line around a, a huge gas line, which is connecting Guiria with the, the rest of the country. Okay, that was done by PDVSA in the recent years. Okay, alone. Okay, next. So here we see in this slide, I mean, the, the, the location of the wells. Um, PDVSA will use daisy chaining recollection system. Okay, uh, there won't be a platform, but a boat. Okay, it will be more cheaper for, for PDVSA to, to start the production. Uh, we see the potential of each well. Uh, each well. Okay, there are four wells ready, uh, which in summarize 150 million cubic feet. Okay, next. So this is a nice pitch uh, done by PDVSA. This is the pipe layer Castoro 7, and that was in last last October. Okay, um, that was a real challenge for PDVSA doing that because 
Teresa had no experience until that time producing in the offshore, okay? Uh, PDVSA, I mean, that's the, 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 um, was a test for PDVSA, okay? Um, basically, PDVSA is learning a lot with that. That means also that they lost a lot of money in learning <laughs> uh, that. It's very interesting because Castoro, which is the pipe layer, is the same that lay the pipe in, Mar in Cardon 4. And PDVSA uh, was also helped in some way by, by Cardon 4 because those products are quite similar, okay? Um, people in PDVSA trained uh, in Cardon 4 about how to do some kind of thing, I mean, how to, to, to produce in the, in the offshore, okay? But in any case, uh, this is where PDVSA is learning, okay? That's something I would like to highlight, okay? Uh, next. Okay, that's another pick. Okay, next. Okay, in Guiria, which is the onshore area where the gas will, will arrive, PDVSA designed a huge industrial complex. Uh, of course, uh, if you, they are only producing in Dragon, um, I mean, all these points remain in, in paper, okay? They are only building a PAGMI, which is a planta processadora de gas metano para el mercado interno, which is a small treatment plant, okay? But PDVSA uh, will want to also to, to, to create a petrochemical area, uh, even an LNG terminal, which is, uh, which is not viable today, okay? Next. Okay, now we're going to talk about Plataforma del Tana, which is in the extreme south and in the extreme east of the country in what we call Fachada Atlantica, and it's in the south of Trinidad Tobago. Uh, what we see here, players, we see that Pedevesa is a player. Um, we have French Total, the Norwegian Statoil, and of course Chevron. Conoco mm, used to have a block here until he decided to leave the country after the immigration of the, in 2007, uh, yes, 2007. So PDVSA took the share of ConocoPhillips in this project, okay? We, we have five area, two blocks, uh, the block number two, which is Loran Mana, Manati, uh, is a binational, in some way, a uh, reservoir, uh, so, Chevron had to unit, unitize this, this, this field in order to start production, okay? As well as Coquina Manakin, which is the oil field, which is also in the border, um, a part of the, of the reservoir lies in Trinidad and the rest in Venezuela, okay? So that's very interesting, interesting area, okay? Next. Okay, just a, a this is uh, the Trinitarian area, okay, offshore. What we see is that Trinidad has already done the entire infrastructure to produce uh, gas in this area. What we see in the Venezuelan side, in, 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 in black, is where the subsea gas line should be. There's no uh, subsea gas line already done, and is the private which is in charge of to build that gas line, okay? Which will be more than 300 kilometers of sea, okay? It's very expensive. So basically, uh, Trinidad is looking for unitization with Venezuela, okay? Um, Trinidad is, has huge interest to to bring that gas into the into the Atlantic LNG, okay? Mm, I have to say some international uh, old companies has, I mean, coming to us, they want to learn a little bit more about those areas because they want to have a, an area to produce gas, but to, to send it to Trinidad, okay? As you may know, Trinidad, uh, the production clinic is declining and, I mean, the reserve is also declining, okay? So, 
today there's no a priority for Venezuela to, to, to produce in Plataforma Tana, but um, the situation in the country, as you may know, there's a huge economic crisis. And the government must be more pragmatic, okay? Um, and a way to be more pragmatic in natural gas is to decide to just export gas to, to monetize your reserve, okay? Uh, an excellent way would be through Trinidad, okay? Next. Okay, this is uh, well, more information about, uh, about Plataforma del Tana. Uh, this is basically Chevron who's leading um, a project there in the block two, uh, which is called Loran Manati. Uh, Loran area is in Venezuela and Manati is in Trinidad. Okay, we're talking that 70% remains in Venezuela, 30% remain in Trinidad. Okay, this is uh, methane gas, which is very dry. Okay, next. Okay, and the last project is Cardon 4, which is located in the west of Venezuela. Uh, the players are mainly Repsol and Eni, okay? It's an Italian-based company. The Devesa had the right to be in the consortium, but they decide not to be because, as you may know, this is a six billion project, and if the Devesa wanted to have a 35%, which is the limit of the, of the consortium, uh, they had to put a money that is not, is not available right now for PDVSA. So PDVSA decide, decide to stay away in the project, but uh, it doesn't mean that PDVSA doesn't care about that. In fact, PDVSA has been helping the, the consortium, Cardon 4, a lot, providing gas to everything, I mean, improving um, everything for the, that the, the, the gas will become without problem, okay? As you may know, uh, PDVS is the single buyer of this gas, okay? And the license established that uh, if the do domestic market is satisfied, um, the, the private consortium are able to export that gas, okay? Next. The remnant, the excedent of the gas, okay? So this is a peak uh, has been taken two months ago. Uh, as I mentioned, this project came online last Saturday uh, with 80 million cubic feet. Um, and without, without problem, okay? Next. Okay, this is the, the, the ramp of the, the production. <clears throat> we see that at the end of the, I mean, this slide suffered a, a year delay. I'm sorry, I, I didn't see that, that mistake. I have to update. But what we see is that uh, at the end of the year, we will see a uh, huge important volume of gas coming into the domestic market, into a hungry domestic market, okay? Then we see also the liquids and the condensate production, which is very important. Condensate belongs to the nation, so all condensate produced in, in, in a single product of gas in Venezuela, the, the, the nation is the owner of that, okay? But we see that mm, when the project will reach uh, full production, 1.2 billion BCF uh, condensate will reach around uh, 44 kBD of condensate, which is uh, a huge volume, okay? Next. Okay, so that's what I, I, I told you. Uh, early production uh, is, is a, a parallel uh, line with phase one. So in phase one, that will be at the end of the year, we will see another 300 million cubic feet, um, which at the end of the year we will see early production and phase one uh, summarizing around 450 million cubic feet, okay? Next. Okay, the destiny of the gas, which is basically Western Venezuela, and you see in the black line, this line connecting with Colombia, so that's the way that Venezuela uh, will export gas to Colombia after there are, uh, there, are uh, there are many challenges to, to, and, and hindrance that they uh, will have to face. But again, this is how we think the gas will be consumed. Okay. Next. 
and this stuff I wanted to, to, to show you this because this slide comes from PDVSA, okay? Um, if the gas from carbon-4 will be exported to Aruba or Curaçao, it will be PDVSA. The, it will be a PDVSA decision because the gas, when it arrives to the onshore, uh, it belongs to the, to, I mean, it's the delivery point. So when the gas coming from the offshore arrives in the onshore, uh, it belongs to PDVSA. I mean, they pay it, of course. But if PDVSA decide to export, or if this gas uh, would be for the export purpose, uh, it will be PDVSA in, in the one in charge to, to develop an infrastructure. Uh, probably this gas could be, could be destined to Aruba, which is very, very short. And there are many, many ways to, to send gas into the Caribbean island. I mean, we, we have uh, bar, char, barge or mini LNG, I mean, or a gas line, okay? Next. Okay, mm, that's in the, in the last part of the presentation. We're going to talk about bilateral agreement with Colombia. Okay. Uh, what we see here is that um, the the border, okay, Colombia, Venezuela, and we see the the gas line is a 220 kilometer uh, gas line uh, built by PDVSA in, in six months it was a record at that time. Uh, the thing is that uh, the formula is linked to liquids, okay. So right now the, the price is very low. It's because mm, what we see in the oil price, okay, which is very low in comparison to last year, okay. Um, we see that mm, Ecopetrol will buy that gas. Uh, the price will be, I mean, will be probably three dollars, okay, or maybe more, or okay. Uh, the problem is that mm, there's still some infrastructure, um, basically uh, compression, because uh, the gas must be uh, a very high pressure in the border, and PDVSA has not yet built uh, uh, this required infrastructure. Okay, as you may know, uh, Colombian regulation is very strict <laughs> in comparison with the Venezuelan one. Um, maybe Copetrol will decide to receive that gas in that in such condition but penalizing with the price, okay? But the problem is that PDVSA mm, would rather to, to, to send carbon for gas, not to Colombia, but uh, to power plants, because as you may know, uh, in this area, uh, power plants run using huge diesel, okay? We're talking that a single power plant only consumes 40, 40 kbd of diesel daily, okay? And if PDVSA reach to switch that plan to, to, to natural gas will be an economy of four million dollars daily only in that power plant, which is much more money than exporting gas, whatever, okay? Next. Okay, that's chart show, I mean, the historical volume that we received from Colombia in red, okay? And the volume that Venezuela probably will have to send in Colombia if they decide to start the exporting of gas, okay? Next. Uh, so this is a map that shows the, the, the flows of natural gas in Venezuela, which is very complicated in this part of the country. We see the yellow line, the gas coming from Colombia, um, the blue, the gas associated gas coming from Lago de Maracaibo, and in orange, the gas coming from the east of the country. I mean, it's very complicated. Um, as you may see, all the infrastructure here were made to supply uh, the oil industry needs of gas, okay? Then we see that, uh, I mean, we start seeing new power plants, uh, new consumers, and the dynamic and the flows will start changing. But in any case, um, the infrastructure there is very obsolete, it's very old, and must be replaced, okay? So that, mm, that takes, I mean, time and, and money, okay? That PDVSA mm, right now uh, don't have, okay? Next. Okay, final comments. Uh, well, first of all, Venezuela has the largest reserve, or maybe, 
as Jeremy mentioned, the eighth in, in, the, in the entire world, but uh, doesn't mean that we, we have huge uh, gas available for, for, for market, okay? Uh, the oil industry consumes around 70% of the total gas production, which makes our market very particular, okay? As I mentioned, the archival basin is declining and it's affecting the, the entire market, okay? Uh, we have a huge deficit in, the, in that area. Uh, as I mentioned, we have we consume huge diesel in power generation, and the main challenge uh, here is to switch that um, those power plants into natural gas. Okay. Uh, then, platform Altana, as I mentioned, the offshore project um, needs more clear commercial terms. Okay. Uh, right now, Chevron is leading with this project. Um, I hope that will be will come online in the next five years, but again, uh, we need more commercial terms, okay? Mariscal Sucre will be coming online next year, but again, this is a project 100% de Devesa. Um, I mean, we have, to, we have to see the gas <laughs> first in the onshore to believe that this, this gas is finally coming. Of course, the Devesa has been putting huge, uh, volume, huge money in infrastructure, and infrastructure is there. And probably PDVSA, what it's doing is to creating all infrastructure required to find uh, an investor, okay? Uh, and Cardon 4, well, as I mentioned, came online last Saturday. And hopefully, after many years of, uh, of projects and delays and so, finally came online. Um, and of course, Venezuela in the future could become a, a hub, okay? Why not? Uh, we can send gas to Colombia, Aruba, Curaçao, Trinidad, and Tobago. Uh, but again, we need more uh, incentive um, to do that, okay? And of course, the main challenge for me is the domestic price, okay? Uh, as, as, I, as, you may, as I show you, natural gas price is paying local currency, and I mean, there's no incentive to, to boost production for private in, in the, for the domestic market. So basically, that's the information I wanted to share with you. Uh, I hope you you enjoyed it. Um, I'm ready for for your for your question. Thank you very much, Antero. That was uh, extremely comprehensive and, and detailed. And we do have some questions. Just a reminder, as Alexa, Alexis mentioned at the outset, there is an icon, a little silhouette of a person, and a question mark. That's where you click, and then they'll give you a box, and you write a 140-character um, limited question. Uh, let's let's jump into the questions, and uh, you know you've brought up so much here, and there's a variety of questions. And in fact, I've I've we we've, we've heard so much for so many years. For example, about Plataforma Deltana, about Mariscal Sucre, and and the reversal of the Columbia pipeline. I think this is all a ripe for uh, conversation, as is the most recent developments of the Perla project. Uh, let's start with Colombia, though, because uh, I, I think you ended there, and, and I want to put a question on the screen, Antero, um, and, and we'll begin with the pipeline project uh, between Colombia and Venezuela. And the question is about the exports of gas to Colombia beginning next year uh, in terms of a contractual obligation. Is there some flexibility provided? Why don't you uh, fill in a little bit more, complement a little bit of what you already said about that uh, and respond to this question, okay. please. Okay. Um, well, thank you for a very good question. I assume Alfredo is from Colombia. <laughs> well, in fact, um, PDVSA um, had to start uh, the export to Colombia in, two, in, two, in four years ago, okay? Uh, no, three years ago. And they delayed that obligation two times, okay? And what we see, what we saw in that case is that in the case that PDVSA couldn't be able to export, they just asked um, an extension to Colombia uh, to, to, to provide them gas, okay? So, but now what we see is that Colombia stopped the, the export to Venezuela. Um, PDVSA had to start the, the, the export, I mean, next January, okay? But what it could happen, I mean, PDVSA, if we don't feel comfortable uh, exporting the volumes he, he, he's in the obligation to send, he will extend that contract. That's what I think what will happen. Uh, because 
maybe the first year PDVSA can send that volume to, to, to Colombia. I mean, with huge challenge because sending gas to Colombia means that uh, somebody in the in Maracaibo will remain without gas. Okay. Uh, the problem is when they they will have to. Uh, I mean, to, to, in the fourth year they will have to send 150 million cubic feet, which is a huge volume of gas. And if, if PDVSA is not able to do that, if they will pay a, a take up, there's a take up pay clause, take up pay clause, uh, and you don't want to, 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 I mean, to start exporting something that you cannot fulfill, okay? So I don't know exactly if there is an obligation to start uh, in January. What we see is that PDVSA also had the obligation to start in 2012, 2014, <laughs> last year, and okay, so why not a fourth time? I mean, what we call in Spanish, una raya más para el tigre. I mean, you don't have any credibility, so, <laughs> so probably uh, I don't have the, 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 the answer in my hands, but what I see is that if the vessels don't feel comfortable, if you don't have the necessary infrastructure, I mean, why you want to put, I mean, this obligation, okay? What, what I think. So, so I think you've answered this, but there was a follow-on question that we'll throw up really quick before we, we move to a different topic. Um, and you talked about the various years that the contract was not exactly uh, adhered to. So uh, it does sound like there's some penalties, but Venezuela does have the choice of not exporting to Colombia, correct? Okay. It looks like PDVSA, it's very important to PDVSA to fulfill that. Okay. Uh, exporting gas to Colombia means that Venezuela will become an export country, okay? Uh, look at it in the headlines. I mean, we have a government with likes mm, the propaganda, okay? Uh, exporting uh, something means that you have uh, in your, I mean, that you export excedent, okay? Uh, of course, exporting gas to Colombia means that you will have, I mean, uh, currency. I mean, you will have dollars for that. The problem is that uh, you can compete with power plants, okay? We're talking that uh, you are releasing diesel, which costs around 12, uh, 12 million BTU against three that you're going to be paid, okay? So, as the choice, mm, maybe Venezuela will, will, will be exporting gas to Colombia one day. The problem is that yeah. we, don't, we don't know exactly. Okay, the gas is there, but I mean, again, PDVSA need infrastructure and compression in order to put the gas in the specification because the other thing is that maybe the gas, PDVSA and, and Ecopetrol is dealing with that, okay? The problem is that the Ecopetrol mm, don't want to receive the gas with this condition, okay? So that's an, another topic, okay? Perfect, perfect. Let's, uh, I, I, we probably could spend a little bit more time on that for sure, uh, but let's move to a, a different question, and you brought up, uh, okay. you know, obviously the relationship between the, the project's proximity to Trinidad, the needs in Trinidad, but also um, the opportunity to, to, to perhaps use the infrastructure. The question is, would it not be easier to send gas to Trinidad and use their LNG export facilities instead of building yes. a new terminal? Yes. yes. And uh, yes. so, yeah, what do you think? There, yes, uh, of course. Mm, so that's why, for example, Chevron is pushing to, okay, Plataforma Altana license the state something like 80% of the production will be for export, 20% for the domestic market. Uh, to be export, we don't know exactly uh, what does it mean. Uh, mm -hmm. At the beginning, Plataforma Altana would be an LNG project and the, the terminal will be, was going to be in Guiria. But mm, the, 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 the LNG project for Pet in Perevesa right now is, I mean, it's no way, okay? This is, uh, this, there's no plan for, for, for LNG right now. And of course, in Trinidad will be, uh, will be an excellent way to monetize that money. And of course, uh, the problem with that is, okay, is Perevesa will be, will accept uh, that maybe, I mean, that's part of the, the, the negotiation, I mean, but what I think is that in the midterm, that's what, what is going to happen, I mean, 80% okay. of the gas that you have to export will be through Trinidad, probably. 
Excellent. Uh, so, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I, I want to move to a little bit more of the domestic. Obviously, those are some export questions, some international questions. Uh, there, there's a couple different questions here on um, – let me put up a very specific one to begin with that's uh, relevant to the uh, internal market. Any progress on Pedevesa's Autogas GNV, which uh, natural gas vehicle program? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, the, the program exists, okay, and Pedevesa has been trying to launch this project. Uh, why this project, I mean, remain, remain where, where it is? I mean, because the price of the, the gasoline, I mean, you can compete with the cheapest, by far uh, the cheapest, I mean, goods that you can buy with uh, three bolivares, which is, <laughs> I mean, it's basically for free, the gasoline. So you can compete mm -hmm. uh, with mm -hmm. that. So basically that's the, re the reason. However, however, uh, for border mm, cities uh, with Colombia, basically in San Cristobal, in Táchira area, uh, natural gas will be very fine because what PDVSA is doing there is to reduce the volume of gasoline for the, for the domestic consumption. So people have to, to deal with that, with this scarcity of gasoline in the border that probably if you, you develop um, autogas or natural gas for vehicles would be very excellent. But again, if you want to, to go to, to apply this policy I mean, in a better way, you will have to, to increase the price of, natural, the, of, of gasoline, basically. Right, right. Now Venezuela is uh, famous the world over for its incredibly discounted, let's call it, gasoline. Yeah. Uh, Question here, uh, you mentioned obviously the power crisis, which has been, you know, several years a recurring topic. Uh, obviously, the government's talked for several years also about uh, monetizing gas for the power sector. What this question is, is, what does the government or what incentives must be in place to promote, and promote investments in gas production, uh, and especially vis-a-vis -vis for power generation? Okay. Um... Well, if you there are two things here, okay. Uh, we consume huge volume of diesel in, in Venezuela, so all diesel that will be released uh, for natural gas will be again for PDVSA, okay. Uh, we are just uh, counting that uh, around 60 kbd will be released only in Maracaibo area uh, and Paraguaná with the gas of carbon four. If you uh, multiply that. Mm, a barrel of diesel, you will see it will be around $5 million daily. Okay, that's one incentive. The problem is that, uh, well, you are, if, you, if you are in the gas business, you would rather to have money than, than a product, okay? But that's what you have. Okay, and the government has basically no incentive. There's no clear incentive to produce uh, natural gas. Uh, if you ask me why carbon four is producing gas there, I mean that's a topic for a next webinar. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but uh, so basically, uh, first of all, if you um, if you want to to boost production, you have to pay in dollars to produce it. So that's basically for me the mainly the the first and by far the the, the first incentive to gas production. Okay. There's a couple more questions, and we're we're almost out of time. Uh, and there is actually a question that that's a follow-on to that that I want to put up here, just just quickly because there's another important question I want to get to to, to to wrap up. But first, you, you talked a little bit about what I think this this question uh, relates to, um, in an investment on monetizing La Perla. Um, what what has to happen in terms of reversal of pipeline f flows in order to receive um, and maybe export the gas coming from La, La Perla? And there's a follow-on uh, question that uh, I'll throw up right after this that talks about infrastructure okay. of the eastern and western parts of the country as well. Okay. Could this someone elaborate a little on the lesson? Okay. Um, PDVSA is the, the only one who can do that, okay? But recently, in the last uh, Congress uh, of uh, ABPG, Asociación Venezolana de Procesadores de Gas, PDVSA launched a project to, find, uh, to finance um, infrastructure, okay? Uh, but um, again, PDVSA has no idea how to open a market, and at least in infrastructure. There's no 
uh, I mean, there's no clear rule for that, okay? There's no uh, real uh, regulatory body. But, of course, there are many companies who have been asking me that question, okay? Okay, I am Colombia, and I need that gas, and Perveza don't have, I mean, the, the necessary money to, to build the missing part, I mean, a 44 subsea gas line uh, in order to, 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 to complete the highway to Colombia, okay? But I mean, right now, probably if, if there's a, a private who wants to show that business to PDVSA, PDVSA would by far accept because um, he's looking for, 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 for finance those kind of projects. Uh, um, yeah, why not? Yes, I think it would, be, it would work. So the final question, I mean, these are all interrelated here as we wrap up, and, and you're talking about the constraints financially and otherwise on PDVSA, but there are major infrastructure questions that have been, you know, coursing through all of these questions and your answers. So let's wrap up here uh, specifically about the Western and Eastern, um, uh, the interconnection of the, the West and East of Venezuela and where that stands. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, um... I mean, the people who are asking that question looks like he knows the, the, the Venezuelan grid. Yes, uh, there was uh, the ECO, what we call Inter Interconnection Centro Occidente, which was a missing part of the grid uh, in order to connect the east with the west. It's functioning, okay? The problem is that it's very, well, that's what PDVSA said, that it's very expensive to transport gas from the east to the west uh and uh, and of course in the east there are also i mean there are many needs okay uh, of, of of gas as well and as the west but again the, the, there is the connection and right now right now uh okay carbon four is start production but it's not enough to provide all gas to maracaibo so well, right now we are seeing that part of the gas coming uh, has been consumed in maracaibo is from 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 Oriente, okay? So yes, the connect, the, the, there is the interconnection and it's working right now. Excellent. Well, Antero, um, thank you so much. This has been uh, tremendous. I mean, we have squeezed a, a heck of a lot of information into this one hour uh, as our webinar today. So we really appreciate you uh, sharing all of the information with us. And thank you to everyone for joining us online today and uh, some wonderful questions. As, as Antero sort of hinted at, there is uh, at least one or two uh, more webinar potential uh, topics here, material, and, and we will continue to, to talk about Venezuela, obviously. Uh, there's there's all uh, always a um, abundance of, of information and, and topics to, to talk about. Um, thanks again, Antero. Thank you, Alexis Arthur, for uh, continuing you, to run the Energy Webinar Series here at the Institute of the Americas. And uh, you see on the screen, I'll wrap up by inviting you to join us uh, in person in Panama City, September 22nd for a one-day energy roundtable. We'll be looking at the booming economy in Panama and how the uh, energy matrix and energy infrastructure uh, can be keeping up with that uh, that booming economy and what's what's happening in terms of uh, primarily the power sector, but also uh, some developments uh, on, on other elements of the energy market. And it's never too early to talk about the La Jolla Conference, especially since next year is the 25th annual, the 25th anniversary of the La Jolla Conference, and that will be May 25 and 26, 2016. And if you're not, or if you are on Twitter, I should say, then follow us at IOA underscore energy and uh, the old fashioned website, www.iamericas.org slash energy. Thank you all again, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in person or seeing you online. We, uh, we're working on a couple of webinars for August, uh, Mexico uh, oil contract, and also uh, a more general outlook on the price of oil. We'll get that information out to you as soon as we get those confirmed and uh, dates lined up. Thank you again, and hope to see you in person or online soon. Have a great rest of your day and summer.